Hi everyone, my name is Monique. And I'm Naveen from Before You Play. And welcome to the start of our West Kingdom mini-series. Yes, this is a game designed by Shem Phillips and S.J. McDonald and published by Renegade Games. Today we are starting with Architects of the West Kingdom. This is the first one in the series of three games. Uh, and basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be playing through all three of these games with the Tome Saga expansion. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. The Tome Saga. Tome this saga. is a debate in our household. I, for the longest time, thought it was pronounced Tomi Saga. Because I had no Woodward. opinion until uh, I had the right answer. I had the opinion, yes. <laughs> yes, so thank you to everybody in the community who corrected us on that. It is Tome Saga because yes. we are going to be collecting tomes. And so if you're not familiar with the said saga, <laughs> this is a an expansion that allows you to play all three games in the series as part of one long campaign. Mm -hmm. And so we are going to be playing with that expansion today, as well as throughout the rest of the campaign, so that at the end of the entire trilogy, one of us is going to be the winner yes. of the entire series. This was highly requested by a lot of viewers. We saw it multiple times in different comments once we announced the West Kingdom trilogy. Uh, I had no idea what that was, yeah. so I had to look it up just Did like I. anybody else. And so now we're pretty excited to play it and showcase it. Yes. And so as per usual, we are going to start with a teach of the architects as well as how the Tome Saga works. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to go into our full two-player playthrough as well as a review. If you're interested in jumping around, we'll include timestamps in the description down below. But before we begin, if you can all do us a big favor and turn on your Klingon subtitles, just in case we need to make some corrections, we can add them there. We'll also add those corrections to the description, hoping not to do that. <laughs> uh, and if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, please consider subscribing. And with that, we're going to get started. So if please direct your attention to the center of the table. We are all set up here for actually a three-player game of Architects yes. of the West Kingdom. Because today we are going to be playing with the two-player bot, mm -hmm. Mr. Uh, Constantine, Constantine over here. And so just to kind of give you the lay of the land, this is actually a worker placement game. Mm -hmm. So quite refreshing, right? We haven't uh, showcased a worker placement game in a long in time. In a little while, yeah. And so around the board, we have all these various worker placement spots that are going to get us various types of resources, money, etc. On the left-hand side here, we also have a virtue track because there's a little bit of morality in this game, which we'll kind of get into in a second. Mm -hmm. At the top right-hand corner here, we have the prison because in this game, we can place each other's workers in prison. Yep. We also have the apprentice offering for hire, as well as some buildings that we'll all discuss in a second. Sure. Each player also has their own player board, along with 20 of their workers mm -hmm. to use during the game. And on the left side over here, we have the Tome Saga campaign board. And so this game is set around 850 AD, and each player is playing as royal architects. And we are trying to compete to construct buildings, construct the cathedral in order to build up this West Kingdom. Mm -hmm. We're going to be hiring apprentices, collecting resources in order to construct these buildings. And at the very end of the game, whoever has the most points wins. And so the way that the game works is each player is going to be taking turns placing their workers out onto the board. There are two main spots. There are these larger circles as well as smaller circles. And so the general rule here is that any number of workers can exist on these larger circles that you'll see literally everywhere on the board except for in these three spaces. Mm -hmm. These small circles, only one worker per spot. Each time a player builds either a building or constructs a cathedral, we're going to be placing our workers up here in the guild hall. And so because we're set up for a three player game, we're going to ignore these last two columns and just consider it having a capacity of 16 workers. As soon as the 16th worker is placed in the guild hall, that is going to trigger the end of the game. Mm -hmm. Each player is going to get one more turn and then that will end the game. We go into final scoring and see who wins at that point. Now, I do want to mention that there are two main types of cards in this game. The first type are these apprentices, which are all over here. And so apprentices are going to be people you hire that will allow you to do things better, mm -hmm. right? Each apprentice card will show a few different things. On the right hand side here, anytime you see a purple area with a lightning bolt, upon acquiring this card, this is going to be an immediate effect. And so specifically for this gatekeeper, they're going to lose you a virtue upon acquiring them. A majority of these apprentices will give you ongoing effects that will help you when taking certain actions or when doing certain things. This specific card gets you an effect whenever you refresh the black market, which we will talk about later. At the top left-hand corner, it also tells you what type of apprentice this is, and there are three main types. And the significance of that is for when you go to build buildings. Building cards look like this. They kind of follow the same, a similar structure that the apprentices do, meaning they have a benefit at the bottom here in this banner area. Some benefits are immediate, like this smithy, which will get you four stone immediately upon building this building. Some of them will give you end game private scoring conditions. Mm -hmm. So this lighthouse will get you one point for every four virtue. Yeah, in this game, anything that you see with a flag icon, that's end game. Exactly. And anytime you see this kind of like a 
gold banner looking type, mm -hmm. those represent points. Just like you see here in the top right hand corner of each card because each building is going to be worth a certain number of points at the end of the game. Mm -hmm. At the top left hand corner here tells you the requirements that you need in order to construct the building. So there's always going to be a certain number of resources that you have to spend. So for the smithy, it requires four clay and two wood that you would spend into the supply. And some of these buildings also require you to have a certain type of apprentice in your area that you've hired. Employed. Exactly. So for the lighthouse, this requires you to have um, a tiler of sorts. And so building cards are going to be in your hand before you can build them. You have a hand limit of six of these. Mm -hmm. uh, apprentices, you can hire a maximum of five. So just keep those two restrictions in mind. So how do we go about getting these resources? Well, there's these different action spots on the board. So we're going to namely talk about four of the resources. The first one that we see here is the forest. And basically what you do is on your turn, you're going to put out one of your workers. So what it basically says here is for every worker, you get one wood. So on the first turn, I would get one wood. On a subsequent turn, if I was to go there again, and I still had another worker out there, at this point, because I have two workers, I would get two wood. And that holds true also for the quarry. But instead of getting wood, I would get stone. So these spaces are all dependent on how many workers you have in that spot upon placing your worker exactly. for your turn. Yep. So for the mines, there are two different types of resources you can acquire here, either clay or gold. When you put out your first worker, what you're gonna get is one clay plus one clay per worker there. So in this case, you would get two. One naturally plus one for the one worker here. If on a subsequent turn, I had a second one out here, then you'd get one clay plus two because I have two workers here. At the bottom here, you see gold, and this says gold per every two workers. So in the first turn, when I put one worker out here, it's not even eligible. I'm not allowed to get one gold for one worker because the cost is one for two. On a subsequent turn, if I was to put this second piece out right over here, then I would get one gold from the supply. Now, the silversmith acts very, very similarly to the way that the top portion of the mines works, where you get one silver plus one silver for every worker that's there. So if I had two workers out, I'd get a total of three silver. And those are the four basic action spots that will get you those types of resources in the game. There are a few other spots that'll get you these types of resources, one of which is the King's Storehouse. And so going to the King's Storehouse allows you to take one action for every worker that you have in that spot. Uh, and there are two different types of actions you can take. You can either turn in any combination of two resources between stone, wood, and clay in order to gain one virtue, which is going up this track, which we'll talk about in a second. Or you can turn in any combination of three resources using stone or wood in order to take one marble, which is this really highly coveted resource type right here. Yes, a lot of buildings require marble to construct them. As well as the cathedral. Mm -hmm. And I say that because you'll notice that marble is not one of the basic resources that you can easily get. Yeah. And again, that is one action per worker of yours in there. So to be clear, if there are opponent's workers in any of these spaces, you completely ignore them when gaining your benefits. Yep. The next spot we want to discuss is the workshop. So the workshop is how you can hire more apprentices and gain more of these building cards. There are two different types of actions you can take here, and they are listed here. The first one is the topmost action up here, which allows you to hire an apprentice. In order to do this, you must pay four silver, two of which are going to be paid to the tax stand. So anytime you see these like red circles, these are tax, this is taxable income, I mm -hmm. guess. Yep. You pay it to the tax stand so that people can potentially collect all of the money that's in here in a future turn. And the other two coins will go straight to the bank. And so when hiring an apprentice, if you look at this menu over here, these cards are organized according to how many workers you have in this spot. So if Naveen were to take this action or here to place his worker here, he only has one worker in this spot, which means he's only eligible to hire one of these two cards because it's in the one worker spot. Although that's not entirely true. If he only had one worker here and say he wanted to hire this squire over here, he can actually pay silver in order to hire this squire. He would just have to put one silver coin on top of each of the cards that are in front of it. If he placed a second worker here, then he would only have to pay one coin to hire the squire. Yeah, you always place coins from left to right. That's mm -hmm. the hard fast rule. The bottom action here is very straightforward. It allows you to take a number of building cards into your hand equal to one plus one card for every two workers. So if it looked like this, then Naveen would be allowed to take two cards from this deck straight into his hand. Yep. Now, before we continue to the other action spots, let's move on to the town center. Mm -hmm. This is probably the most notorious spot in the entire game. And one of the characteristics or one of the things that makes this particular game stand out from other games. Unique. And the reason why is because this spot allows you to capture other players' workers, or even your own. Wrangle them up. In order to put them into prison. And so the way that this works is, say I am here in the forest, maybe. 
Naveen Let's has just go workers ahead and there. Put some workers out. And say, Naveen, we're to go to the town center. Going here requires you to pay one silver into the tax stand. And in doing so, it allows you to capture all of the workers from of one player from a location. So taking this action will allow Naveen to maybe take all of my workers from the forest. And any of your opponent's workers will go straight to the left-hand side of your board. It's kind of like the wrangled up area. Now, in doing this action, he can also instead choose to take his own workers. So if you were to take that action, instead of taking my workers, he can wrangle up all the workers here maybe. And anytime you capture your own workers, they go straight to your board so that they are available to use again. Yes. For each additional worker that you place in the town center, you can pay an extra coin to the bank this time to wrangle up additional groups of workers. But in a two or three player game, you can only ever choose between two locations in one turn. So if Naveen had placed a second worker here, he could pay the two coins, one to the tech stand, one to the bank, in order to take all of my workers from the forest and then all of his workers back to his board, choosing between two locations only. In a four or five player game, you can only choose from one location. Mm -hmm. The tax stand is very straightforward. You just go here, you lose two virtue because this is a very non-virtuous thing to do because you're stealing all the money from the taxes uh -huh. and you get to take all the money that are in that's in the tax stand. Right. Now back to resources. We were mentioning that there is another way to gain resources and it is here in the black market. So the black market is a way for you to gain a certain combination of resources. Mm -hmm but it's going to lose you virtue. So there are three spots here in the black market. They're all small circles. So only one person can be present in those spots at any given time. Yep. And so the first spot here allows you to pay one silver, lose one virtue in order to take whatever combination is in the bottom card here. So in this case, it would be one marble and one stone. The third spot requires you to pay three silver, lose a virtue in order to take whatever is here. And this is gonna change over the course of the game, which we'll talk about in a second. The middle spot is a little bit different. You pay two silver and lose a virtue in order to hire any apprentice that's in this menu here, gaining any coins that may be on top of the card. Mm -hmm. Or it allows you to draw five cards from the building deck, keeping one of them. Once all three of these spots are completely filled, so say if it were to look like this and Naveen were to take this spot, then we are going to have a black market reset. All three of these workers will go straight into prison and then we will do a series of things, including flipping the black market card so that uh, it's a new combination of, of resources that are shown here. Mm -hmm. Now, before we move on to the last part of the teach here, we do want to just briefly discuss this virtue track because we've been talking about gaining and losing virtue throughout the game. Mm -hmm. And so at the beginning of the game, we are going to start at seven virtue, which is right here. And so over the course of the game, as you gain virtue, as soon as you get to 10 virtue here, you're going to start being eligible to earn points at the end of the game for your placement on the virtue track. So if you end the game at 10 virtue, you get one point, 11 virtue, two points, etc. The caveat is once you hit 10 virtue, you have become so virtuous that you are now no longer allowed to visit the black market. Yes. That is not a virtuous thing to do. And so you just be mindful of that. Right. As soon as you go past 14 virtue, every time you go past 14 virtue, actually, you get to discard a debt card, which we will talk about in a second. We haven't even discussed debts yet. Mm -hmm. Now, the opposite is true. If you lose virtue, as soon as you hit five virtue, at the end of the game, it's gonna be minus points, depending on where you are here. In addition, as soon as you hit the fourth virtue and below, you're not going to be allowed to build the cathedral. Every time you have to go below zero virtue, you actually gain a debt card. And so debts look like this. They're basically gonna cost you minus two points at the end of the game for every one of these you have in possession. There are going to be various ways for you to be able to pay off a debt, including visiting the guardhouse, which we'll talk about in a second. And paying off a debt allows you to flip over the card, gaining you a virtue. Also on this virtue track over here, if you are so not virtuous, at a certain point, you start getting discounts on your tax. So at this point right here, anytime you have to pay tax, you actually get a one discount on paying to the tax then. If you get down here, you actually get a double discount. So if I was went to the workshop and I was this low on virtue, I would only pay these two to the bank and never pay the two to the tax. We were mentioning earlier that we're gonna be building buildings as well as the cathedral. In order to build either of these buildings, you have to visit the guild hall. And that's what we were discussing about placing a meeple here and then going and constructing your building. Now, in order to build the cathedral, on the left-hand side here, it shows a certain number of requirements. You must always discard a building card from your hand. That's what that green rectangular symbol symbolizes. But in addition, you also have to discard a certain number of resources. So for the first level, it's one gold. For the second level, it's any combination of four wood or stone, etc. At the end of the game, you're gonna get however many points is listed in the row that you end up in. But I do wanna mention though, that if it looks like this, where two players are kind of blocking the path. 
now a yellow player cannot continue to build the cathedral. Yeah, it's a choke point. It's a choke point. Yeah, you can't you can't bypass that. And each time you build the cathedral, you also get to turn over one of these cards and you just gain whatever bonuses are listed on the card. So in this example, it looks like it's three silver and one virtue. One virtue. You'll always go up on virtue. Yes, because it is quite a virtuous thing to do to build yes. the cathedral. Now that we know how to build both types of buildings, let's go back to the guild hall. So we mentioned that this is a timer of the game. It is also another way that the black market resets. As soon as a worker is placed on the first spot of this second to last row, as well as the last row, we are going to have a black market reset. Mm -hmm. All of the workers get thrown into jail. We flip over the card like we discussed earlier. And then each time there is a black market reset, this thing happens over here in this box. Any player who has three or more workers in prison loses a virtue. In addition, whoever has the most number of workers in here is going to gain a debt. Mm -hmm. So it is not the best thing to have workers in prison. No. And speaking of the prison, the guardhouse is the last placement spot that we want to discuss. Going to the guardhouse presents you with a menu of different actions that you can take. The number of actions that you're allowed to take is dependent on how many workers you have here. So it's one action per worker. And so having two workers here lets me take two actions, any combination. I could even do the same one twice for certain types of these. The first thing you can do here is you can take all of the prisoners that you've wrangled up. Say so, we have yep. a bunch of workers like this. I can take all the prisoners in my wrangled up spot, my player board, and place them into prison, gaining one silver for each worker that I place there. So in that example, I would gain four silver from the bank. The next type of action I can take is I can just take all of my workers back from prison onto my player board. Yep. The next thing I can do is I can spend five silver, paying two of them to the tax stand, or I can gain a debt and lose a virtue in order to take all of my workers from wrangled up spots on everyone's player boards. So like this right here, Monique can get this out of my little pen. Exactly. Exactly. And if I had workers in Constantine's pen, I would be able to take them back as well. And the final type of action is one of the ways in which you can pay off your debt. You simply have to pay six silver, three of which to the tax stand. Mm -hmm. And so this is one that you might want to take several times if you have several unpaid debts. And that is pretty much all the different things that you can do in this game. Mm -hmm. Like we were mentioning, the timer is in uh, the guild hall. So as soon as somebody builds the final spot here in the guild hall, the 16th point, the 16th point, yeah. then each player is going to get one more turn, including the player who triggered the end of the game. And at that point, you go into end game scoring. So then you would tally up all the points that you gain from your building cards, any points from the cathedral, any points from the virtue track, wherever you end up, you lose two points for every unpaid debt. You get one point for each gold or marble in your supply. supply, because those are the resources that are harder to get. One point for every 10 silver, and minus one point for every two uh, workers that you have that are still in prison. Yep. And that is the entire game of Architects. So we do want to discuss the how to play the, with the Tome Saga as well as the bot, but we're going to get cleaned up and we'll discuss those two before we start the gameplay. Okay, so we are ready to begin. Uh, we haven't discussed the Tome Saga yet, but we will do that in a second. Just to give you guys a heads up, uh, there was a draft that we did. So we start with three building cards now. We started with four. We went back and forth. So I have three. Monique has three. Uh, Monique is going to be second player. So she's going to start with one extra silver. So I start with three. She starts with four. Mm -hmm. And uh, Constantine does not have to worry about money. And we'll talk about Constantine in just a second. Now, because we were playing with the Tome Saga, uh, one thing we didn't mention in the, in the teach is that each player board is actually double-sided. Mm -hmm. So one side has a kind of variable setup. Some of them will allow you to put uh, a certain number of workers in the prison, etc to start the game but because we're playing with the tome saga we have to start with the standard setup so everybody's going to have the same exact uh stuff stuff yeah, yeah. the tome saga also has us a draft a an apprentice a starting apprentice and we also change our virtue depending on the apprentice we hire so I started with the gatekeeper, and so at, uh, during the black market reset, this apprentice allows me to remove two of my workers from prison. I had to lose a virtue, though, as a result immediately, so I start at six. Sounds pretty good. Um, okay, mine is the woodcutter. Uh, it's real basic. It's just anytime I go to the forest, I gain one extra wood. That's kind of nice. Yep. Basic, but, uh, but effective. Basic, but effective. Now let's discuss the Tome Saga for a second. And so the way that this works is this is going to be an entire campaign for all three games. Mm -hmm. And so the winner of the whole campaign is the person who collects the most amount of tomes. Yep. And tomes are represented by these cards. Um, this is also an example of a tome. Mm -hmm. Each game that we play in the trilogy is going to have three of these cards set up here that's going to be very specific to the game. Mm -hmm. And each card is going to have a specific objective on it. The first player that meets that objective gets to claim the card. Yep. Each objective card also has a certain benefit at the bottom half. 
that is going to be available to the person who collects it for the next game. Yeah. So these benefits are all going to affect Paladins, which is the second game in the series. Exactly, yeah. Now the player who wins the actual game is going to be able to collect a certain number of additional tomes that are face down, no powers or anything. And the number of those is going to be determined by how far the point spread is. Yeah. So if it's a major victory, which I believe in a two-player game is more than... Greater than, than 10 points. 10 or 12 points or mm -hmm. something like that, we'll have to check. Then that player gets three tomes. If it's a minor victory, it's two tomes, Something I believe. Like that, yeah. And then second place gets to take one of these uh, crests. The significance of these crests is the first player to achieve four of a kind essentially is going to get the corresponding tome. So that's pretty much all, all there is to it. Yep. And so at the end of all three games, whoever has the most tomes wins. Now the three tomes that we're going to be using for our game of Architects are having five apprentices. So first of five apprentices. The first person to achieve 14 virtue, which I don't know if that's even going to happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the first person to reach level three of the cathedral. Ooh, okay. that's going to be quite the race. Interesting. That one's tough. Now, the last thing we want to discuss briefly before we begin is uh, Constantine over here. So we're actually going to be playing with the solo player bot. Mm -hmm. Now you can play using the bot in a two-player game to make the board a little bit more competitive. Some more tension. Mm -hmm. yep. And so the way that Constantine works is he has his own deck of scheme cards right here. And so whenever it's his turn, we're going to flip over the top card of his scheme deck. It's going to require us to place one of his workers in whatever action spot it says at the top. And then just do everything it says from top to bottom. Yep. And so, we'll go over this as the game goes on. Yes. Yep. And that's essentially all there is to it. He's not going to build any uh, buildings, but he will construct the cathedral. Mm -hmm. He's not going to acquire any resources besides marble. Yep. So his end game scoring is a little bit different from a standard player's. He also has a deck of future schemes, which are a little bit worse, yeah. and they get added to his standard deck as the game progresses. Yep. And I think we are ready to get started. Yep. Are you? I am ready. All right. So Naveen is first player. Um, okay. Take us away. All right. So for my first move, first action, one worker, one spot, I'm going to take this worker, <laughs> place him in the mines. Oh, so, already. Uh, the w action I'm going to take is the top one here. I'm going to get one clay plus one for every one I have here. So I get two clay. Nice. Keeping uh, the red not theme to, going. Yeah, <laughs> don't, don't confuse them with your, uh, yes. your workers. We'll create a money bridge. There All we right. go. So that's going to go to me, and then Constantine will go third. Oh, and uh, in setup, we are supposed to have four in the tax stand. There we go. <laughs> I almost lost virtue. You took, a, you took a tax money. Yeah. All right. For my first turn, I am actually going to do something a little different. I've never done this before, but I'm going to the workshop. Oh, my God. Right off the bat. So I have to pay all of my money. Two of which are going into said tax stand, wow. and two will go into the bank. And I'm going to hire the <laughs> this person. It's funny, okay. the jeweler. And so this person lets me take an additional silver when going to the silversmith. So all done, huh? Yep. So we move these down, and we are going to refill. We have the trickster. The trickster lets you pay one less silver when going to the black market. Yep. Ah, that's actually an interesting yeah. one. If you take them, though, you will go down one virtue right away. True. Okay, so now we have a Constantine over here. Are you ready to reveal the first <sighs> Constantine am, yeah. scheme? Let's do it. Ah. Good luck. All right. He's going to the town center already. Oh my gosh. Oh no. So Constantine is going to the town center. This is not good. Right so off the bat. Constantine's going to go here. Then we resolve going from top to bottom. Uh, what we're going to do is pay one coin. Constantine pays one tax. Uh, <laughs> and then Constantine is going to capture or wrangle up all our workers uh, from the most... Uh, the, the location with the most workers. Yeah, yeah. But in a two or three player game, it's going to be two different locations. Yes. Which means he's capturing us both. Wow. Gosh, all my work to put a worker in there. <laughs> All my, all my work. And uh, well, you know what? The good thing about it is at least this card is out for now. It's going to stay in his discard until we have to uh, until we have to reshuffle, essentially. Well, there, there's more than one in that in that deck. So That's right. It's coming. Yeah. Didn't think about that. But one is out of circulation. Yeah, well, maybe we'll capture him next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay, so back to you. Wow. Okay, well, since I have the woodcutter, I'm going to go to the forest here. So I get one per uh, meeple here. But because I have the woodcutter, I actually get an extra one, so I have two now. Nice. I'm working so on some gathering wood. some resources. All right. Well, I'm going to go to the quarry. Okay. So you zig, I zag. All right. So one stone for me, please. Thank Perfect. you. All right, Constantine, what are you going to do? Oh, gosh. Scheming. The workshop. the workshop. So they're going to go to the workshop, and then they're going to pay two coins into the tax stand. Yes, the tax stand is looking juicy. Uh, and then they're going to discard this Literally this card, because yep. there's a little grid here. Yep. Any silver on the discarded apprentice should be returned to the supply. No worries. Thank you. And then we're going to go ahead and refill this. Unfortunately, it also says that we must 
um, add one future scheme card per worker yes. to the scheme's discard pile. So there's one worker here. Yes. So just one. So because it's to the discard pile, we get to know what it looks like. And it's going to be a guardhouse card. That, These are uh, more souped up ones. Yes. Compared to the original. Okay, we'll deal with that later. Deal with that later. It looks like they're going to go to the dis to the guardhouse and do some stuff. And wreak some havoc, yeah. All right, so that's, that's it for Constantine. Back to you. Back to me. We're right. flowing. Uh, yeah, well, the getting is good. Okay, I'm going to go to the quarry. <laughs> I'm going to get some stone. Okay. We're trying. That's All right, me too. I will something. go to the quarry, but now that I have two workers here, I get two stone. Two stone. Perfect. Thank All you. right, Constantine, what are you going to do? Oh, gosh, back to Constantine. Yeah, I don't like their turns. The town the center, town center. Again. <laughs> Oh, boy. All my work. All my is this um, all you're gonna be doing all game? Bad shuffle money. So back into the town center, they put one coin into the tax stand. Yeah. So because I um I'm in two locations at the same, we have to resolve by priority. So there's the forest is gonna get resolved before the quarry for me. So these two for you, and because I'm tied here in order, it's the forest then the quarry. So they're gonna take out of the forest, unfortunately. All right, back to you. Wow, I can't get an engine going. I know. Uh, they are being a little brute. Okay. Okay, I'm actually going to go to the quarry again. So I'm going to get two stone now that I have two workers there. Okay. All right. All right, I am going to the mines. So let's get some clay. All right, so you get two. Two clay, yep. Oh, can't even do the bottom I action. I can't do right. the gold yet. Yes. Oh, gosh, back to Constantine. <laughs> Here we go, you uh, ready? Uh, no. Okay, to oh. the guardhouse. Wow. Oh, my Perfect. gosh. Perfect. <laughs> okay, so they're going to go to the guardhouse, oh, man. and they get to take as many actions as possible. It's one per worker. This first action here is taking their workers back from prison, but because they can't do that, do that they're going to skip it. And instead, they're going to put all of us in prison, mm -hmm. and in doing so, they're going to gain a marble. Yes. So this marble is one point for them at the end of the game. So it is quite possible that Naveen and I could lose this game. They're playing a good game so we far. We need to work together. <laughs> we're in cahoots, Naveen. Uh, we're, we're getting owned. <laughs> oh, gosh. That's not cool. Okay. No. Well, back to you. All right. I am going to the mines. So we're trying to get some engine going here. Uh, I get two brick or clay. Okay. There we go. Your turn? Yep. I am going to go to the mines as well. All right. Do you so, want gold or are you going to be taking um, three bricks? No, I'm going to take some gold, please. Oh, yes. Gold you is are the gold good. master over there. Thank you. So now I have I now have some stuff. Nice. Fortunately, there is no uh, mechanic that I know of that removes resources from our board or else that would be way too painful. Yeah, it would be. So good. here we go. Are you ready? No. For Constantine? The town oh, center. Oh, my gosh. Mo oh. How many of those are there? We should have counted that. We did not count that. I did not count that. Um, well. Anywho, here we go. There's so, that. So t your two get stripped off here. Yes. And my two get stripped off there. I mean, the thing that's wow. good is it'll be a lot of bang for my buck for when I finally go to the guardhouse yeah. and take all my people back. Oh, uh, one uh, goes to the tax stand, by the way. That's right. Ooh, Gosh, that tax stand that tax is looking is real good. Juicy. Good thing I'm next. One, two, two, three, two virtue that you're gonna have to lose four, here though. Five. So an eight, nine, ten, eleven dollars, eleven silver. Okay, I'm doing it. <laughs> no, enough, enough counting. I'm gonna go to the tax stand. I'm gonna lose two. So I go down to five. But I take all the cash. That's pretty nice. I, I need two hands for this. Why didn't I go there? <laughs> oh well, two virtues a lot. I already started at six. So. Yes. But now I have money. This is great. Okay, well, I'm going to go to the forest. Let's get some wood. One wood, please. Wood for you. Thank you. All right, Mr. Constantine. Okay, Constantine. This would be actually not a bad time for them to go to the town center. Let's Do they see. have more than three of those cards? No idea. The black the market. black market. Okay, so they're, they're going go. to gain the rewards below instead of the ones mm -hmm. on the cards. So They're going to the far right. Yes, the far right is the, the first spot here. Yes. And they're going to lose a virtue, Good. and they gain two marble. Two marble. So it's so. another two points for Constantine over here. Constantine getting constant points, man. All right, I'm going to go to the mines, okay. and I'm going to get a gold. So because now I have two, ah, yes. I'll take the gold. All right, so back to me. I'm going to go to the guild hall, because I'm going to construct uh, our first building. Time to build. So going up here. And uh, I'm going to construct the treasury. Okay. So the, re the treasury requires me to have a tiller, who I do have here with the jeweler. Mm -hmm. And it requires me to turn in a wood, three stone. So here's a wood, three stone and a gold. Okay. There you go. 
And so this is going to be uh, worth six points at the end of the game. And immediately I can take either one gold or three silver. And so I am definitely going to take is. three silver because I don't have any money. Sure. And I did not go get the tax stand uh, cash, unfortunately. So this is done. I'm just going to kind of tuck it in back here. Yep. Because it doesn't really do anything for me anymore. So Constantine again. All right. The guild hall. Hey. Okay. Okay. So they're going to put a worker in the first possible space. Sure. And then they get to move their player marker one space up the cathedral. Oh, uh, the cathedral or the virtue? They gain a virtue. Okay. And they also move their player marker one space up the cathedral and they discard the topmost reward card. Nice. This yeah. just goes, you want to see it? You want to see it. It would have been that. It would have been I take know. one of these cards and a virtue. Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to keep the discard right there. Sure. Now this card actually says that they take the first possible action below in the following order. So because they were able to do the topmost spot, we're assuming that they don't gain the marble. So we're going to skip out on that yes, part. Yes, I believe so. Cool. Back okay. to you. All right. All right. I'm going to go to the forest. And because I have the woodcutter, I get uh, an additional wood. So I get two total. Okay. All right. Now that I have a little bit of money, I think I'm going to go to the black market, actually. Ooh. I'm going to pay a coin and lose a virtue so now you and i are tied okay. even though you got there by taking some sweet sweet cash and i'm going here for a wood and a gold wood and gold though. but let's try it it's good one wood one gold All and right. that's me very good so constantine here we go the king's storehouse so they go there and they're going to get one one virtue one virtue per worker. They yep. have one worker, so they are going to get one virtue. They're looking good. Wow, Constantine is kind of a difficult opponent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Very difficult. Okay, back to you. All right, so I'm going to go to the guild hall, and we are going to finally build something. So I'm going to build my tavern. This one requires... It's going to be worth six points. It requires me to have a, a carpenter symbol, which I have with my woodcutter. It's going to cost me a lot of resources. So three wood, two stone, and one gold. So let's go ahead and just get that. Three so it, wood. So, oh, you have that. Yeah, so two three, stone. Three wood, two stone, and one gold. Here's the gold. Thank you. Two stone, three wood. That's going to be worth six points. And whoops. And right away, immediately, I get to draw, a, uh, take an apprentice. Wow. Yeah. Go so for it. let me tuck this under because it's, it's done. That's nice. Yeah, so I get the free apprentice. Who do I want? I think I want the squire. So the squire, it's gonna get me the ability to have that extra um, type of builder, the yellow car carpenter, I think, or? Tyler. Tyler, there it is. <laughs> uh, instantly I go up on virtue, and then if during the black market refresh, I have nobody in prison, then I'd gain a gold. Okay. So I'll take so it. So you better work on that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I Yes, you're right. Okay, oh, we have the merchant. Let's get up. So, I'm going to get my virtue, though. Sure. Before we move on. Going to the king's storehouse, they can pay. you can pay three uh, three silver to gain a marble. So that's an, uh, an alternative way of gaining marble. Sure. All right, back to me. Yeah. Okay, so I am going to, while well, I still can, because I am literally one point away from not being able to do this, oh, I'm yeah. going to build the cathedral. Sure. So going to the guild hall, I'm going to place uh, my worker right there. And in order to build a cathedral, I have to discard a gold as well as a building card from my hand. So here's the gold, and here is the building card. Okay. So let's put that in the discard. Discard. And then I get to move up uh, right there. So nice. at the end of the game, if I stay here, I'll get two points. <laughs> yes. In addition, stay there. I get uh, whatever. Oh, oh, two virtue. Two virtue. That's good. I'm a little bit disappointed. I wanted some resources, but virtue, I guess, is fine. Yeah, virtue is good. <laughs> and that's my turn. So we are now going back to Constantine. This is a quick moving game, right? Are you ready? What do you think it's going to be? Not the town center. Town center, imagine. let's go. No, guild hall. Oh, okay. you would. Constantine. So they go to the guild hall and then they move their player marker one space up in the cathedral and discard the top reward card. Plus they get a virtue. Wow, Constantine. So, oh, that would have been money. Oh, that's a nice one. Gosh, stinker. All right, back to you. Back to me, huh? Okay, I'm going to go to the workshop. And I'm going to hire somebody. So it's, I'm going to pay two to tax. Okay. Uh, two to the bank. Let's go out. And then uh, because I have one uh, worker here, I can take from here freely or I can take down there, but paying. But I think I like this one right here. This is going to get me that third um, worker type, which I don't have. And this says, anytime I go to the king's storehouse, I can turn in two money, which I have a decent amount of, for a virtue. So nice. I will take it. That's going to be me right there. All right. Okay. So these get moved down. Yep. And you paid the money? Um, yes, I did, definitely. That's All why right. there's two here. And 
Perfect. Oh, okay. So we have the laborer. The laborer doesn't give you any benefits, but they are hardworking. So they are actually representing one of each type yes. of worker. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wears many hats. Okay. So I am going to go and I'm just going to go to the guardhouse. And I'm going to take back these, uh, all these workers. So that's it. That was a really easy, quick turn for me. All right, Constantine, do your, your dirtiest. Town center? Oh, oh. my gosh, Constantine. All right. Oh. So they go to the town center. They're going to pay a coin into the tax stand. Amazing. Uh, so they're going to take my worker from the forest. Oh, actually. Well, they can't take from the. They cannot take from the black market. Yes, but black it's tied between secured. forest. Oh no, I'm not in the workshop. Yep. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, so the forest, yes. and then for you, they're going to take your workers in the mines. Gosh, these people. Yeah, Ugh. that Constantine. Constantine, we should have really thumbed through that deck. I know. Wow. <laughs> We didn't ca card count, <sighs> so this is all just, we wanted it to be a surprise, like it's, a true a third surprise. player, right? It's a surprise, yeah. Okay, what are you going to do? Oh my gosh. All right, I think I'm going to go get out of prison. I don't, I don't like where I'm at here, so I'm going to go there and just take my two workers back. I know this is happening here, but I uh, just want to get out of there. <laughs> okay. Smart. That's me. I was going to go to the black yes, market. Yes, I had a feeling you were going to go to the black market. <laughs> and make you take a debt. Uh, yeah, I know. All right. Okay, I'm going to go to the quarry. Okay. Just one stone. Stone. Please. Thank you. Very good. All right, Constantine. Here we go. The, the guardhouse. Guard house. What a waste of my turn. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> nice. Oh, no. Okay. okay. Well, so first things first. They have two workers there now. So they're going to take as many actions as possible, one per worker in the following order. Can't get anybody out of prison. They are going to put all of our people Back in to prison. prison, yeah. So. Amazing. Let's do that. And in turn, they are going to get a marble. That's so one action. And then they could spend two tax dollars to get their people out, nope. but that doesn't work. Three coins nope. to... To discard a debt. They don't have a debt. Yeah, discard a debt and go up a virtue. Yep. All right. So it's me, huh? Yep. Well, I didn't like that threat about you coming here and doing that, that thing. So now I got to go there. <laughs> I wish I had some criminals to take to prison with me because I would have two actions there. Ah. <sighs> You're forcing my hand here, Monique. What are you going to do? I'm going to go here because I, I, I don't want to be in prison. I need to get out of there. <laughs> this seems like a suboptimal turn, but gosh. Yeah. I didn't want you to go here and do that thing to me. That is not, that's not an ideal turn, unfortunately. Mm -mm. Um, okay, well then I am going to go to the town center. Mm, wrangling up. So I'm going to pay a coin to the tax stand and I'm going to wrangle up. I, have to, I can wrangle up from two different locations. So I think I will definitely take Constantine's workers from the town center. And ooh, do I take your worker or actually never mind because I only have one worker here. I can only take from one location. So Constantine it is. Yes. I mean I meant to do that. I, I chose not to take your workers, right? Maybe? True. True. <laughs> okay, Constantine, let's go. We have the King's Storehouse. Okay, so they're going to go here. So they're going to go here and they get uh, two, two virtue. virtue. Oh my gosh. Constantine working hard. Well now, oh, actually, Constantine ignores all of the effects on the virtue track. Yep. So even though they're all the way up here, they can still go to the black market. Indicated by these. Yes. Think, forget about it. Yep. All right. Back to you. All right, I'm going to return to the workshop. And so here it's going to cost me two to the tax stand, uh, two to the bank. And I'm going to take... This person here. Oh, I was so, eyeing him. Hey, so this one is instantly I go up one virtue. So now I'm back to seven. Uh, and then anytime I contribute to the cathedral, I will be getting two brick. That's an ongoing thing. Two clay. Two clay, yes. But I guess, I don't know, does clay turn into brick? <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> All right, perfect. All right. Okay, so we have the the miner. This is a Tyler yep. type person. And whenever you go to the mines, you just gain an additional clay. Nice. It's kind of okay. like my uh, woodcutter. So back to me, and finally, I'm going to the guardhouse. All right. So I, get, I have two workers here, which means I can take two actions. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn in Constantine's workers. You know how you like that for a change, mm -hmm. Constantine. And I gain one silver per worker that I place. So it's gonna be four, one, two, three, four. And then I'm going to, with my second worker action, I'm gonna take all of my people back from prison. So I did like a hard reset nice. on uh, on my people here. Mm -hmm. And that is my whole turn. I feel like I'm now inefficient because I wasted two turns doing this whole charade. Yeah. But at least I'm free. So. You did something. Okay, ready? Town center. Oh my gosh. So there are a million of these town center cards. <laughs> yes, there's way more than we thought. So yes. they're going to go there. 
Okay. Uh, so they're gonna pay a coin to the tax stand. Yeah, my two then, come out. Yeah, those two for you. For me, I am a tie between the quarry and the town center. So it's gonna take this one. Town center. Because this is the uh, location that is in oh, higher sorry. priority. My two are supposed to go to the jailing spot. Trying to take your workers back, I see. Uh, my, yeah, my bad. I realized it though, <laughs> so that's good. All right, back to you. All right, off to the black market I go. Here we go. So I'm gonna go there. I'm gonna pay two coins to the bank. All right. And then uh, I'm going to take the... Well, you have to lose a virtue first. I do have to lose a virtue, Let's yes. Let's not forget that. Lest we forget. Now, I'm going to take the top action, which is gain any one of these. You're trying to take the tome, aren't you? I do want the tome. All right, I'm going to take the pickpocket. So the pickpocket immediately makes me lose virtue, which is not good, but <laughs> I do get to gain a gold okay. right away, so I'll take it. That's nice. And because I am the first one to collect five, or employ five different um, apprentices. apprentices, I'm gonna take this. Ah, so I have saga. one tome. So in the next game, it says, exchange all your remaining workers for criminals after passing. That'll make sense next during game. Paladins. Yes, during Paladin. So I have one tome though. Naveen. I'm toming. I hope all of that work was worth it. <laughs> I hope so too. Because <laughs> uh, technically, apprentices aren't worth any points at the end of the game. But you know. anyway. All right. So we have the, the patron. Nice. And the patron gets you lets you turn in one stone for a virtue at the king's storehouse. Nice. That's actually not bad. Okay. So we have a black market refresh. Yes. So all these people so, go to jail. Yeah. All those people go to jail. We get to flip over this card. So now we have a different uh, selection Ooh. of... Uh, resources that are offered at the black market mm -hmm. and now anybody who has uh, three or more p prisoners i suppose yep. goes down to virtue there goes that and whoever has the most gains a debt give him so a debt constantine gains a debt take your debt there you go so it's gonna be minus two points for you uh actually before we did the black market because i have the gatekeeper i was supposed to be able to take my uh, two workers back so this goes back into my my player board very nice so that's actually kind of yeah. nice. Thank no, you. No penalty for me. Yep. Now, I do have the squire. Had I had nobody there, then I would get gold, but mm. that wasn't going to work out. And actually, before I take my turn, we just realized that uh, uh, my workers... Boo -boo. Yeah, a little boo-boo. When he took the town center action, so they took my worker from the town center. They mm -hmm. were actually supposed to take these two yes. from Easy. the yes. guardhouse because it has the most amount of my workers right. in it. So there right. you go. We have righted a wrong yes. before it became a problem. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go to the black market. Okay, right starting there. it up. So I'm paying a coin and losing, uh, a virtue. losing a virtue. I gain a stone and a marble. Marble, nice. So just like that. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, Constantine. Constantine. Here we go. Tax, the tax stand. stand. They lose two virtue. Good. So, well, they place their worker yes. in the tax stand. Right. And then they return any coins from the tax stand yep. to the supply. Yeah, they just they wipe it. They also lose two virtue and they gain a marble. So they have five points right now. Yeah, Thank you. minus two. Minus two, that's true. To my points. six and to your six, so. Yeah. And you, you let them lose two virtue? They, they definitely lost okay. two, yeah. Oh my gosh, we cannot lose to Constantine <laughs> Naveen. <laughs> we. I feel like we might. If we lose to Constantine, we are not going to calculate their score in terms of the Tome Saga. That's We're going true. to do it according to our own scores. True. So uh, one of us will be victorious for the campaign in the end. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go to the Guild Hall and we are gonna to contribute to the cathedral. I need to get off the block here. Interesting. So this costs me one gold and one card to do so. So I will get rid of, uh, which card was it? It's gonna be this card, because it seems to be almost impossible. So that's gonna go out. This is gonna be gold in. And now I move up on this track and I get to flip this. Come on, be something really good. Nice. Oh. Three coins and a virtue. Nice, there you go. Not like you needed more coins. I know. Yeah, you All have right. your silversmith benefit. I don't know why you're not, you're not tapping Yeah, that. that was a mistake. <laughs> I was enticed by, look at this, look at how they look. <laughs> They're <laughs> the so jewel. fabulous. Yes. They have jewels all over the place. All right, so back to me. I'm going to go back to the quarry. So two stones, please. Two stones. Okay. Thank you. All right, Constantine. Oh, what Constantine. I'm traumatized. I know. The King's Storehouse. Okay, they're back. Oh, they're back. So they gained three virtue. Three virtue. Wow. Aren't you going to go to the town center at any time here? Uh, I'm thinking about doing it right now, actually. Okay. Yeah. Shouldn't have so, said anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's where I'm going. I'm going there, and I'm going to wrangle up. Um, do you have to pay a coin? I do have to pay a coin. To the tax, the tax stand. stand. I'm going to wrangle them up. Perfect. Come on over here, you. Perfect. That's great. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, good job. All right, so then I'm gonna go to the workshop. And instead of hiring an apprentice, I'm gonna take a card because I only have one worker here. I only get to take one card, right. one building card. Yep. So it goes into my hand and that is it. Okay. Oh. Constantine. Interesting. All right, so uh, for Constantine, let's see. Uh oh, we're gonna be end. Yeah, the deck is oh, running deck. low. I feel like I'm not doing anything. Okay. okay. The King's oh, Storehouse again. Good job. Gosh, good thing I did that. So that they just got... go up one virtue. One point. Wow. That would have... If they go all the way to the top there, they get to discard they their one They could get rid of their debt. Yeah, exactly. Our one saving grace. It's a problem. Yeah. Okay, back to you. All right, I will go to the quarry and pick up a stone. Cool. Okay, your turn. Okay, I'm going to go to the guild hall and I'm going to contribute to the cathedral. All so right. in order for me to do this, I need to pay a co any combination of four uh, stone and wood. So three stone and one wood, it looks like it for you? Well, I have four stone. I can just do all oh, yeah. stone. Yeah, sure. It really just depends on what I need. I'm going to do all four stone. Wow. So four stone, and then I discard a building card from my hand. Okay. So I'm just going to do this one. Okay. And then I go up here, and now I get to take, please be something good. Hey. Two. Two wood, two wood. and a virtue. Thank you. And a virtue. So I get to go up on virtue right there. Perfect. Uh, back to Constantine. Okay, Constantine. Here we go. The tax stand. Tax stand, okay. So they return. So here we go. We put a worker here. They return any coins from the tax stand uh, to the supply. And go they down. Lose two. They go down two virtue and they gain marble. a marble. Oh, okay. Right. So we're, not bad, not bad. The six points now. That's decent. Now back to you. You know, I'm going to go back to the quarry while I can. Yeah. So yeah, before he steals it's me away. It's not bad. I'm going to get two. That's me. Snappy right. turns. I too shall go to the quarry. Three so for you. Three stone. Okay, you got something brewing here? I've got something brewing. Okay. Constantine, here we go. The black, the black market. market. Okay, so He's the, gonna go here. the spot, yeah, they're going to go right there. They go from right to left in priority, so they go there. So they go down a virtue. Okay. And then they gain two, two of these uh, marble so they, types. They're gaining points. They are gaining a lot of points. Yeah. So that's it for them. So back to you. All right, I'm going to go to the guild hall. Time to build. So I'm not going to contribute to the cathedral, but I am. So I'm going to build the church. And what the church requires is three clay and three stone, which I have. So three clay and three stone. Nice. Immediately, it allows me to go up one virtue. So I will go up one virtue again. <laughs> and then immediately, what it would allow me to do is discard one debt. I don't have any, but I just wanted to get five points. So. Yeah, it's five points at the end of the game. Yeah, that's awesome. I'll take it. So that's funny. I think it's funny that we're just kind of hovering around this like uh, yeah. six, six, seven, eight. One virtues. of these tomes has reached the 14 level, but yeah, it's, nobody's it's getting not that. really happening. Yeah. Let's be honest with ourselves, right? I know, I know. <laughs> nobody's getting the 14th virtue. I know. All right. So back to me, I'm going back to the workshop and I'm going to take two more of these building cards sure. because now I have two workers here. So two buildings and what do we have? Oh, cool. All right, so uh, now back to Constantine. Second to, no, we have, yeah, second to last scheme card. Okay. The workshop. The workshop. Okay, so worker. Two into here. Yeah, where's the workshop? The workshop's here. Okay, so workshop and now they are going to take, pay two coins into the tax stand. Yep. They're going to remove this uh, apprentice out of the game and if possible add one future scheme card per worker to the schemes discard pile that is For not two. good so they're going to add two of these bad bad cards and these ones we get to see yeah so it's going to be the uh, a guild hall which so is going to be a nothingness yeah yeah just speed up the game and then uh, another oh, no. town center oh, no. Oh, that's no. fine i guess are we keeping track of how many town i think centers? there's like five maybe six i don't know oh gosh plus we don't know what that one is that's nasty. Yeah. All right, back to you. Well, seeing as I don't have any cards in my hand and I have nothing working, uh, wow. I just want to let you know, by the way, that as soon as somebody goes back to the guild hall, we're gonna have another market. Uh, yeah. I market know. reset. So. Well. Oh so, wait, wait, wait. Sorry. Let's yeah. refill this. Don't want to uh, to skimp skimp out on the apprentices here. Yeah. This is the conspirator. So I think we've seen this person before. Sure. They uh, when you go to the town center, you pay one less coin. I believe. So this card is specifically one less silver at the town center, but you can never skip out on the taxable one. Right. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the guardhouse. Ooh. So I'm going to drop off. Uh, I get three actions here, so I can only, only take two actions from what I see. So I'm going to drop off these three here. Okay. Gaining three bucks. Yep. One, two, and three. And then uh, I'm going to take my worker back as my second action. 
Uh, I don't have any debts to flip over. And then this is a pretty penny to pay just to take these two workers back. So I'm going to say no to that. And uh, that'll be it. All right. That is fair. Right. And I noticed actually something from a little while ago. Because I had this uh, person employed, when I went up here on this cathedral, I'm supposed to get uh, two clay. So ah, yeah. resources are valuable. And there's a whole <laughs> reason why I spent four bucks on this guy. So Especially when you're playing with yeah, Constantine. Yes. Yeah, so... I cannot let myself skimp there. You need to uh, get your resources while you can. Yeah, totally. Well, I'm just going to go back to the quarry because okay. uh, this is nice having that many. So I get four, four stone, please. Oh yes. my gosh. Thank you. Okay. Thank you kindly. That's me. Uh, Constantine. Okay. Uh, last card. What do you got, Constantine? The guard, the guard house. house. Okay. okay, so that makes sense. So I get makes thrown sense. in the slammer. They're going to put their last person in the guard house, which makes sense because now they're going to take back all their workers. So first thing is they take all of oh, gosh. their workers back. <laughs> that's not Clever, good. Clever, Constantine. I mean, that's good for them, but not really good for us. And then, because they have three workers, they can continue doing this. They're going to put all of us in the slammer, in the slammer for a marble. And then uh, they could take they could pay two coins to wrangle up people but they don't have that so instead they're going to pay three coins to the tax stand yeah and this is going to allow them to cancel out their debt and go up a virtue they gain a virtue oh Jeez. man oh man too good <laughs> too good constantine touche clearing it off constantine all right i'm gonna go to the town center we're gonna have to wrangle up some peeps so we're gonna okay. go here uh, the first one's going to go to the tech stand, and I, I have to take Monique out of no. here. This is too much. I don't know. I, don't like it. I thought we had a truce. No. I thought no it was truce. us versus them. And then I can pay another one to the bank. Oh, no. Uh, and who do I want to take? Do I want to take Constantine out of there? I don't know. I kind of want to save myself. I want to get out of here. Oh, my gosh. You're going to let Constantine take all those actions every time? Yes. I need more workers. You're a nasty, <laughs> nasty person. That's me. Well then, fine, it is time to claim a tome. So we're gonna go to the guild hall. And uh, I'm gonna put this here, So, which means at the end of my action, we're going to have another market reset, which is, ooh, which is gonna be bad for Naveen, unfortunately. It's only we'll, one debt. I guess this is like a little bit it's of karma, right? So we built that church. Up my people. Yeah. Okay, so at the guild hall, I'm going to construct the cathedral. So this is going to require me to discard a marble, which I have here as well as a building card from my hand. So let's just do, uh, let's do this one. Okay. And now I'm gonna go up to one of these precious spots and nice. flip over one of these rewards. So two, two wood. wood and a virtue, please. Thank you. And go up one virtue. You got it. Awesome. Well, so since you've reached the third level of the cathedral. Oh yes, that the whole is reason. That is this. I get a tome. I reached level three of the cathedral. So if you know paladins, this is gonna allow me to gain one provision for each laborer pictured on the unselected tavern card each round. Okay. That's really uh, nice. That's we'll, a really nice one. That'll explain, we'll explain that to you uh, next video. Yes. <laughs> all right, so that's me. Now back to Constantine. So all of their scheme cards have been used. So we're going to shuffle and we're going to, uh, there are a lot of town center cards in here. Keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. But here, would you like to shuffle? Sure. So let's just keep a little tally here. So we have, Constantine at uh, Virtue 10. Yep. Uh, I'm at eight, that means at seven, and they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine points just in marble. Mm -hmm. They also no have four points in the cathedral. I think they're winning. So they're definitely winning. <laughs> uh, we're okay with that because, uh, I it don't know, we is. have no choice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. All right, they're doing well. So now they go, right? I think so, yeah. Okay, let's see. The, the guild, guild hall. hall. So they, oh wait, right. before we do this, we almost forgot the black market resets. Oh yeah, yeah. So So these guys all go to the jail. They all go to, yeah, they all go to jail. We're gonna flip this. And then before we do all that stuff, I get to take two of these people back. Yeah, that's too because nice. Because of the gatekeeper. It's too good. It's really awesome. My and squire is useless once again. <laughs> nobody has three or more, yeah. so nobody loses the virtue, but Naveen has the most amount of prisoners here, so yeah. you get a debt. That sucks. At least now you have something else that you can do when you go to the guild hall. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's another option for actions. <sighs> Terrible. Okay, so... Uh, okay, so now guild hall for them. Now they now they go to the guild hall, so they're going to put a worker out here. Oh, we are at the man. last... Ish. Last half of the game here. Oh. Uh, now back to you. All right, I need to get some buildings, so I'm going to go here and just grab one of these cards. Perfect. Okay, you me. like it? Yep. 
Okay, well, I'm going to go back to the guild hall and I'm going to build a building this time. Okay. So it's going to be the Tyler's hut. So this requires me to spend two brick or two clay, sorry. Here we go. One wood and two stone. And at the end of the game, it's going to be worth five points. Nice. In addition, I'm going to get one point for every Tyler that I have. And I have two of them. No, I have one Tyler. One Tyler. So yep. it's going to be worth one more point, but five points is not bad. Yeah. So I'm going to just go put it behind the Tyler that I have sure. so that we know. And that's me. So back to Constantine over here. We have we have a guard, guard house. house. So this is our fourth person in the guard house. They're not really going to be able to do much. They get their worker back. Yes, they do get their, their one worker back. I think that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, nobody to wrangle. They don't have anybody nope. in their area here, and they don't really pay anything. That's it. All right, and that is it for Constantine. Back to you. Yeah, back to me. Okay. All right, let's go to the quarry. Let's get get it while the getting is good. So one, three two, stone for three. You. Yep. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to go to the town center while well, that is still right. good. <laughs> so this is going to require me to pay one coin to the tax stand. And I am going to pay one more coin for the second worker to take an additional set of workers. Okay. So the first uh, wrangle site is going to be all yeah. four of Constantine's yeah. workers. And the second site is going to be the three mm. that Naveen plays with the quarry. You cannot let him continue to compound <laughs> that spot. So Come on now. <laughs> that's me. That's where I went. Yeah. And now we go back to Constantine. Constantine. And he is going to the King's Storehouse. Okay, so they're so, going to get two Virtue. Two Virtue. One, two. They're just moving. They're moving. All, All right. right, back to you. You know, I'm going to go to the forest. Since I have that woodcutter, I'm going to get an additional one. So I get one, two, three. Nice. That's a lot of wood. Yeah. All right, so uh, back to me. I'm going to go to the workshop, and I'm going to... Hire somebody or draw cards? I think I'm going to draw cards. Okay. Actually, hiring somebody is not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. If but I do, hire do this person. You have the person. money, though, to hire somebody. Oh, no, I don't. No. That's so, right. So no. I will go to, to draw cards. Yeah. So it looks like I still only get to draw two cards because I have an odd number of workers. You do there. get to keep them. <laughs> I do. All right, Constantine, let's see what they're going to do. Tax stand. Oh, no. They took my move. Oh, you're going to go there? <laughs> I was totally going to go there. That's yeah. A shame. So they go there, they wipe out the tax stand, they get one marble, and they lose two uh, virtue. So, and they get dang it, that was gonna be my move. So good, Constantine. Because I have this pickpocket. Every time I go to the tax stand, I get gold. Yeah. So I might as well get money while going to the tax stand. Yeah, that's that's too good. That's too good. Good job, Constantine. Well, I'm gonna go to the <laughs> to the workshop here. Okay. And uh, so I'm gonna do the thing that you just did. So I'm gonna draw one plus one for having two people. So, so two one buildings and two. Yes. All right. Well, um, I think I need some more money because that was a rude awakening, not being able to hire somebody. Sure. So I'm going to go to the, the guard house. And all I'm going to do is place all of these workers into prison. Into prison. <laughs> nice. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven coins. Lots of money. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. That's me. Okay. Back to Constantine. Constantine, what are you going to do? Don't ruin oh, my day. Gosh. The town, town center. center. Okay. Well, that was coming. We knew that was coming. So here they are. Okay. So they pay a coin to the tax stand. And then they're going to capture all of my workers in the workshop. That's three, yeah. And all of yours. I think it's from it's the... It's a three-way tie from the forest, town center, and workshop for you. So town center, then forest, then workshop. So that's going to be town center. Yep. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Shoot. Back to you. Yeah. All right, I think I'm gonna to contribute to the cathedral. Oh, I would okay. like to get I would like to get moving on that track just a little bit. Shocking. So, uh, ooh, man, do I do that though? I guess the concern is, what if Constantine goes to the cathedral? Mm -hmm. Then you won't be able to progress that far. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm actually gonna to go to the prison and bail myself out here. I don't ah. like being there, just in case. Just yeah. in case Constantine ruins things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need that's, workers also. That's okay. not bad. Go ahead. Okay, so back to me. I'm going to go to the black market, Okay. actually. So I'm going to go right here. Pay it's going coin. to cost me a coin, and I go down a virtue to do this, but I get a marble. So that is me. And now it is back to Constantine. Nope. Yeah. Where are you going to go? To the, the black, black market. market. So they're going to go here. Oh, man. I wanted to go there next. Okay. Nope. So <laughs> they go here. Uh, they go down a virtue, and they gain two of these. Yeah. 
things. Lots of points, Constantine. Yeah. So back to you. All right. I'm going to go to the guild hall. Ooh, interesting. And I'm going to take care of this. I'm going to contribute to the cathedral here. So I'm eligible to do so. And I'm going to get rid of this card. And I have to get rid of four resources. What do I want to hang on to? <laughs> four co combination of stone and wood. Yes. So wood we'll do you? three wood okay. and one stone. All right. Let's do that. Three wood and one stone. I'm going to move you up here. Yep. And you're going to take the final card. Yes, that's why I wanted to do it. So I get, ooh, a gold. Oh, gosh. And a virtue. I wish I had that card. <laughs> that's gold nice. is so hard to come by in this game. That is so nice. Uh, can I have a gold, please? Yes. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, where are you going to go? That is such a shame because uh, now if I were to go up the cathedral, I only get a, a virtue. Yeah. So my turn's not technically over because I contribute to the cathedral, I get two clay. Oh, nice. Yeah. There we go. It's tough. <laughs> yeah. What is going to happen? Okay, you know what? I'm, I am going to go to the guild hall. Okay. It's kind of a nice way for me to get more of my workers back anyway. Yeah. So I'm going to the guild hall. This is going to trigger a black market reset Amazing. at the end of this action. And so I'm going to actually build a building. No, no. I'm going to build a cathedral. cathedral. What am I saying? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going up in the cathedral. You have everything you need. Yeah. So it's going to cost me a combination of eight resources between wood and stone. So I'm just going to do, let's see. I think you have exactly eight. One, two, no. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Oh, so I you have one wood left over. Keep one wood, which is really important because every resource counts, counts. in this game. So there you go. Uh, and in doing so, unfortunately, Naveen took the last sweet, sweet I had reward to. card. I, I saw you had all those resources, and there was no way I was going to let yeah. that happen. These don't get shuffled. These You actually start the game with a certain number of these, and once they're done, they're done. But I do get to go up, and I gain a virtue along the way. We're just teeter-tottering at the center point here. Yes. Okay. And so because uh, I placed the, a meeple there, we're going to trigger a black market reset. All these go back, or they go into prison. We're going to flip this card. And Ooh. now we have a different combination of stuff. And so before we do this, I get to take two of my workers back, which is nice. And because Constantine has more than three work, three or more workers, they lose a virtue. They do. They also have the most number of workers in prison. So take they gain a debt. A debt. There Good. you go. That's what you get. Good, Constantine. Even Leave though they keep, they keep uh, flushing it. Now I had nobody in prison, correct? Wait, sorry. Before I oh. do that, I think in order to do the cathedral, I have to discard one of these cards. Yes. Almost cheated. Let's do this. This is never going to happen. Okay. So because I have a squire and nobody was in prison, I gain a gold. Oh. Finally. <laughs> That's awesome. Finally. Good job, Bob. Uh, thank you. All right. So we are nearing the very end here. There's only three more spots before it triggers the end of the game. Mm -hmm. But uh, let's continue. So Constantine, the town center. Town center. What are you going to do to us, Constantine? Okay. So first they put a worker there. They're going to put a coin in the tax stand. So they're going to wrangle you here. They are, yes. They're and then I believe I get wrangled out of the forest. Well, it's either the forest or the workshop. It's the forest. It's the forest. Yeah. Yes. Come on, Constantine. Okay, so back to you. Back to me. Okay, I'm going to go to the black market. So I'm going to spend one coin. Ooh, interesting. And I lose a virtue for doing this. Okay. Um, and I'm going to take one wood and one marble. Valuable marble. Nice. That's me. All right, so back to me. Ah, this is tough. You know, I guess I'll go to the black market as <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah, I had a feeling you were going to go there. So that's <laughs> like, three. Th yeah, those two cards are good. So you're going to go down. So three silver. I go down one virtue. And I get two wood and two marble. Yeah. If only I had Constantine's endgame. Oh, actually, these are also worth one point They're at the end of the game. So if I don't spend them. So I give you your bad. wood. Uh, thank you. Give me two, two, yeah, wood. two wood and two marble. Perfect. And you went down a virtue. All right. So that's me. Okay. And now let's see what Constantine shall do. They go to the workshop. Okay. So two go to the tax stand. So one person here first. Two goes to the tax stand. They're going to ditch this person. Mm -hmm. so this is a nice way that we're kind of shuffling through the apprentice, yeah. apprentices. Not bad. And unfortunately, we must also add a future scheme card per worker to the scheme's discard pile. Sure. So let's replenish this real quick. We have the Acolyte. That's kind of like the guy I have over here. Yeah, whenever you build at the cathedral, you get to draw a building card. Yeah, that would have been nice. Okay, yeah. so future scheme cards, there's going to be three of them. Okay. I don't even know if we're going to get through this anyway, but here we go. A guild, guild hall, hall a workshop. another workshop, 
and a guild, hall. a guild hall. So they basically want to say, wrap up the game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> basically, let's go. Let's go. Constantine's kind of in a hurry here. All right. Okay, so back to you. That's that, huh? Mm hmm Okay, I'll go to the guild hall. Okay. And uh, now that I have this marble, I'm going to move up here. And it's going to cost me a marble and a card. So I'll get rid of this card, this marble. That goes out. Okay. Because I moved up, I get one virtue. Nice. And because I have this, I get two more clay. Nice. What virtue do I have? <laughs> How much can I stand to lose? Uh, you can stand. If you don't want to lose a point, you can stand to lose one. One. One, one virtue. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, well, I think I'm going to go to the black market again. Wow. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm just okay. spending all my money. When okay. I'm going here. I'm going to spend two silver. Go down to virtue, yep. please. And I'm going to take four, actually five of these cards, and I get to choose one. So one, one yeah. two, three, four, five. This is going to end up resetting the black market in a second. Let me just choose my one card right. that I right. get to keep from all five. I'm basically going to try to take the card that I can <laughs> most can likely to yeah. fulfill. Okay, I'm taking that card. These go, oh, I think they go back to the bottom, back to bottom yeah. of the deck yep. here. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to reset the black market. Yep. So all of these people go into prison. We are going to flip over that card. I get to take two of my workers back. This okay. is now my new method of collecting my yeah, workers. Yeah, that's a nice, that's a very nice um, thing. Yeah, so Constantine goes down to virtue because they have three or more and they also collect the debt. Good. So it didn't really affect you. You just no. happened to end up in prison. Well, I just don't get the extra gold for being in free of prison. So oh, yeah, that's the squire right. is a little tough to manage here. <laughs> All right, so back to Constantine. She got and to they are going to the town center, of course. Town center. Of Gosh, course. this is the last worker. This person lives in the town center. All right. <laughs> so one coin to the tax stand. Yeah. And well, here's my two comes off. I guess my one person that they're going to take is here. Yeah. Gosh, all my people are in this area right there. Same. That is unfortunate. How much it costs? It costs so much to get all your people back. <laughs> yeah, you need them to actually go to the guardhouse right now. Is what you're asking. Is what you want. Yeah. But... All right, back to you. All right, back to me. So uh, I think I'm gonna go to the guild hall and build. So. Ooh. We are going to be building. I don't want to build this. I'm actually gonna build this. It's worth six points versus going up there for five points. So, uh, this one it required me to have this uh, yellow symbol, which I have one of each. Three clay two stone and one gold. So here's three clay. Okay. Two stone and one gold. And it's worth six points. And at the end of the game, if I have the most clay in possession, then it's worth an additional two points. So mm -hmm. that's why I'm hoarding all this clay. Nice. <laughs> so it's worth six points plus potentially two more. So that'll be wow. nice. Wow. Yeah. You're going to have a nice little payday there. Yeah, yeah hopefully. Okay. So uh, that is my turn. Okay. So back to me, and I think I am going to go back to the black market. Okay. So we're going to go to this spot right here. So it's going to cost me a coin. Virtue. A virtue, uh -oh, yes. Oh, you're in the negative one. A gold and a wood. Ah. So may I have a wood, please? Yes. Thank you. And that's me. So because Constantine doesn't have any more workers, they actually get to collect all their workers back. Yep. And then we reshuffle their deck. So that is And that includes the prison. Yes. Every, they basically take all their workers back from anywhere on the board except for the black market right. and the guild hall. Yes. There's that. Because they had to bring back all their meeples, they skipped their turn. So it's my turn. It's nice for us. It's good, yes. Because there's only one more spot there. I know. They, they have so many of our... I kind of want them to take their turn, though, to go drop people off in the guardhouse because I have very little workers now. All right. I'm going to go to the king's storehouse. And uh, what I will do is... I'm going to pay two coins because I have the patron. I can pay two coins to gain one virtue. So nice. I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. So two coins to gain one virtue. Hopefully I can just creep up that virtue track. <laughs> All right. Uh, Very your good. Turn. My turn. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. I don't know. I don't know what's going to end the game. That's the problem. Yeah. We need to see a guardhouse <laughs> badly. We we both really need Constantine to pull a guardhouse. Yeah. Because we don't have workers to do what we need to do. You can rob the tax stand. For two of our two? No. And okay. then take all the money and then go do You know what? Thing. I'm going to go to the mines. Mm. Here we go. So uh, two clay, please. Interesting. I see what you're working on. You're trying to get gold on your next turn. I see. Constantine. Oh, yeah. If Constantine Town Centers, that's bad. I'm going to be so mad if Constantine Town Centers me. 
Guardhouse. Guardhouse. Oh. Perfect. Okay. Excellent. So they are going to just take one action. Okay. And it's going to be. They don't have any workers there. No. Nope. So they're going to put all of us in, in there. So would you care to do the honors? Sure. And they get a. They get one marble. One marble. Anything else happens to them? Nope. They only have one worker at the guardhouse location, so it's just one action. Nice. Good nice. Well, there's just a mass of people there. It's a lot of uh, a lot of my workers. Wow. <laughs> Wow, wow, wow. Well, fortunately, it doesn't seem like we're going to have a black market reset because mm -hmm. the two times that we would do it here is used up and it's going to require two people to go here to do that. So it seems like we can like <sighs> kind of ignore it. Man. Okay, I'm going to go to the King's Storehouse again. I'm just going to try to tap this. Uh, so I can now take this action twice. So I'm going to turn in two uh, wood okay. and two coins because I can do it with this person to go up one, two. Ooh, now you're getting points. Yeah. Oh my gosh. All right, what you gonna do? You know what, I probably should have done this last turn. I'm a little, I'm like one turn uh, delayed, but I am gonna end the game. Okay. I'm gonna go to the guild hall and I'm going to build a building actually. Building? Yes. Nice. So I have uh, the silver market. Okay. And so this is going to require me to have a tiler, which I do, two wood a gold and a marble nice so there you go and it's going to give me six points at the end of the game it's also going to get me two additional points if i have the most uh silver mm. in my possession right now i have a tie with naveen's so i don't know if that's going to happen but i'm going to go ahead and build that so that's me that ends the game technically uh so everybody gets one more turn including myself at the mm -hmm. end of my turn then the game will completely end and we're going to end game scoring gotcha so so let's see what constantine constantine's is. final turn what are you going to do to us mm. for the last time constantine the king's storehouse okay that was a uh anticlimactic final turn constantine i'm disappointed up. in you <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna end the game with two two unpaid debts mm -hmm. All right, so what are you going to do for your final turn? Okay, last turn. Uh, we're going to go back to that King's Storehouse. So I never got my people out of prison, and I never got rid of this debt. I built that church early. That church let me tear up a debt. <laughs> I was just trying to get points, but okay. So King's Storehouse, we're going to go there. Uh, now I get three actions here. So the first action I'm going to do is turn in uh, these two. I think uh, you're just going to do this three times, All three right? times, yeah. Okay. One... Two, even though you need most money to get two points, but I really oh, nice. want this tome, two and three right here. And the reason why Naveen can spend money is because of one of... Uh, yeah, my patron. Your, your apprentice. <laughs> oh yeah, your patron. Yes, my the patron two money apprentice. to go up a virtue going to the King's Storehouse. Exactly. You made it all the way to 14. I did. You made it to the very top. Which is one of our adventurers here. Wow, I was under the impression that nobody was going to claim that. Uh, hey, I, I did it. Good job. <laughs> yeah, it says, in, uh, this is for, if you know Paladins, it's increase any one attribute marker, one space, if you are the first player to pass each round. So, what? Yes. Oh, no. Monique, you're very familiar with this one, because no, she has no. uh, used this card before in the past. That's so unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's, well. That is my game. I think I'm going to call it. Uh, my butt is going to get kicked so hard in Paladins. Yeah, I don't oh, know. We'll see. Yeah, you have two tomes. Okay. Well, we'll see. All right. Seeing as it is the same difference, I'm just going to go to the King's Storehouse okay. and spend two wood in order to leave this non-virtuous place. Okay. <laughs> it's the same make thing. It look good, huh? One point either way. I might as well look you a little bit You don't want to spend your brick? Virtuous. Huh? You don't want to spend your brick by any chance? Why? Maybe because I have a card that says if Naveen has the most brick, he gets two points. Oh, why are you hiding <laughs> well, that? Well, that's why I said it. Okay, I didn't okay, know that that okay. was there. I dropped a card. Okay. Yes. Seeing as uh, there was full disclosure, full disclosure, I am going to spend the brick. What? You are? Oh, no, no, I'm not going to spend the brick. Oh, like, no, sorry, wow. sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Seeing as Hold I was on. so honest. <laughs> it's clay, first of all. Oh, yeah. Second of all, I, my brain reversed it. You're right. I'm keeping the clay. I'm keeping the clay. Because That's we have limited for. space, I felt the need to tell you that I was gunning for clay. Thank you. Yeah. That is virtuous of you. You deserve the 14 <laughs> I virtue should, for I that. should be able to go up the virtue track and discard this too. Nope. Negatory. For being so honest. All, but, right. all right. We're done. The all game right. is done. We're going to end game I'm, scoring I'm, right now. Okay. So, uh, and this is going to include Constantine, unfortunately. Constantine. Um, all right. There is no score pad, so I'm going to use okay. a notebook to keep track of Ooh, this. This is going to be... I think this is going to be very close. So who went first? You? Uh, I did go first. Okay, yeah. so N, M, and C Constantine. for Constantine. Should we count Constantine right now? Yeah, let's count Constantine uh, right now. 
First Const thing is Cathedral. So they get uh, four points. And the reason why we're doing Constantine first is because their endgame scoring conditions are a little bit different from ours. Yeah. So Cathedral is four points. Okay. Four. Okay. Uh, where virtue they are on the Virtue Track, they get zero points. Okay. Okay. Debt. Debts. They have two debts, so minus four. So they're at zero they're right at now. They're at zero. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Cross that out. One point per Marvel. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen. Uh, minus one point for every two. Oh, I totally forgot about I that. I know. Me too. Oh, no. <laughs> There's not even people in prison. I have seven I people, which is good. I my yeah. people from prison. You should have. Oh, man. Oh, well. You snooze, you lose. Yeah, <laughs> we both snooze. Okay. Well, just know that I would have removed them had I remembered. <laughs> but remembering is half the battle. That's so. true. Okay, so they don't get any minus points for that. But they do get one point for every person in the guild hall of theirs, which is three. Three, yeah. So they're going to end the game with 16 points. 16 for Constantine. We just have to beat 16. Naveen, just 16. Okay. That's it. I think, I think we can do that. Okay, so buildings. Naveen, you first. Okay, I have 6 plus uh, 5 plus 6. 6 plus uh, 5 17. Plus, so 17. There you go. Boom. You already beat Constantine. Um, okay, so I have I have these three buildings. So it's 6 plus 6 plus 5, so that's 17. Same thing also. Oh, um, man, what are we... I also have... If I have the most amount of money, which I do with my <laughs> two coins, I get two additional <sighs> points. Yeah. And one point per Tyler. And I only had two apprentices, so it's just this one uh, right there. So nice. it's going to be an additional three points. Uh -oh. So that's 20 points in buildings. Uh -oh. All right, next scoring condition is the cathedral. Where did you end up in the cathedral? Uh, I ended up with seven points, and you ended up with 12. Okay, Ooh. so seven, 12. Uh, virtue, you have a lot of points in virtue. I have seven at the max. Seven. I have zero. zero. So I was not virtuous. Do you have I have any... one debt. One debt. Oh. <laughs> okay. So minus two. Yes. I don't have any debt. No debt. Um, do you have any... Uh, you have one gold. I have one gold. So you're going to get one point for that. I have two marble. Yeah. So I get oh, two no. points for that. I'm seeing the writing on the wall. <laughs> Nobody has ten coins. No, so I spent no one, all my coins. No one's getting points for that. Minus one point for every two people in prison. So Naveen, you have one, have two, seven. three, four, five, six, seven. So it's only three points. So three points. Minus, minus three, three points. I have... One, two, three, four, five, six. So same thing, minus three. Ah, oh, I think you got me. All right. <clears throat> Some math. Okay, so final scores are in. Okay. Constantine with 16. Okay. <laughs> um, Naveen with 27 and Monique with 31. Oh. So. Wow. I won. You won. But unfortunately for me, it is a, a small victory. Minor victory. It's a minor victory. Yes. So I don't, it's not as cool as a major victory. <laughs> okay, so is... a minor victory means for the three tomes that weren't here, uh, you're going to get two tomes. Okay. Be uh, a minor victory is basically if she wins by less than 10. And so she won by five, four? I won by four. Four point, yes, wow. so minor victory. So you're going to sure. get two tomes, which I'll grab from the box. And, and they're going to be face down. Face they don't down. give me any benefits for right. paladins. And I get one because I'm second place. You get a tome? I get a tome, yeah, according gonna, to this gonna... chart. And the game with equal tomes, yes. and you get two benefits for paladins. Yes. Oh, I'm done. I'm, I'm done. done for. I'm done Why for. Why done? Oh my gosh, because my my benefit is not even that cool. It's cool. Whatever it is, I don't even know what it is. You're going to hate. You'll see. Okay. You'll see in the next video. Okay. <laughs> so, would you like to hand out the tomes? All right, Monique. So we have some tomes here to hand out. These are your two. Thank you. It's this like an award my ceremony. One. So make sure you keep it uh, face down so that we know exactly what it is. So three, three to three. Tomes. Three, three, three. Tomes each. The score of this game does not mean anything. Yes. It's all about how many tomes you collect. Architects so we are tied done. going into Paladins then. I'm so unhappy about that. I so, wanted to win though. That was... Ugh. So then nobody gets a crest. Okay. Nobody gets a crest because it's now a third player. Okay. Technically, yeah. Constantine would get a crest. Constantine as like a, a crest. Uh, participation trophy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that is it. That That's is it. Architects of the West Kingdom. Uh, let's talk about it a little bit, sure. shall we? Yeah. So, what do you think? Uh, cool. I'm so glad we played with the bot because the bot definitely mixed it up. It caused us to have some problems. Um, so, <laughs> yes. yeah, it's it's, I agree. it's pretty fun. Um, I really like that mechanism of stealing people and putting them in prison to make money. Yes. I think that's a really, really cool thing that they designed. Yeah, I think this is a solid start yep. to the West Kingdom trilogy. You mm -hmm. know, the neither of us have played very many of Shem Phillips' designs. So mm -hmm. that's the designer of this game. He also designed the other... Trilogy. I think it's another trilogy, the North right? Sea, I think. The North Sea. Mm -hmm. uh, the only game, I think, before starting this that we had played was a filler type, Noctiluca. a super filler type game called Noctiluca, which yeah. is very light and it's very 
very much so very uh, not the same as these games. Mm -hmm. So this is a solid start to the series. Yeah. I'm excited. I do agree. I think that at two, the bot makes it so much more fun. You never yeah. know where they're going to go. It's, uh, it's it, you know, the fun in this game is that like, random spice right the that, pressure the yeah. pressure the player interaction you never know when your your um your workers are going to be safe mm -hmm. and so without that in a two-player game it, it's a little bit more cut and dry it right? it makes the competition between the two human players better because constantine yeah. we never really thought that constantine was going to win we weren't like oh we're going to lose to this bot even yes. though we were joking about it it's just that constantine creates problems for us so yes. that if i'm competing with monique now I'm really trying to like ugh, yes. get that edge. But I think that's why I like the bot so yeah. much because I don't really care for it to be that much of a... You know, in other games, I, I like it when it's a lot tighter, a lot more strategic in a two-player game, right? Mm -hmm. But for this game, I don't really care for that. I like sure. it to be that like fun factor that you never know what's going to happen next, yeah. right? Yeah. So what about starting with theme? What do you think of, of this theme? Just for, for architects. Sure. It's a, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a Euro. So uh, it's interesting that um, you are building up this town. You're getting the resources. You're hiring apprentices to help, to help you, you build it um it's vir you're virtuous if you're building towards the religious center which is the cathedral uh but you're also going to score points and and be considered renowned for having your own buildings mm -hmm. um so I, I yeah it's pretty thematic um how about yourself the big picture theme it doesn't really stick in my head too much like i don't know that i necessarily care about the architects part of it okay. but what i like about the theme is the way that it kind of uh, weaves the mechanics together yes like mm -hmm. the virtue which is something that we're the virtue and the debt, which is something that is going to be a recurring theme throughout the whole trilogy. Mm -hmm. I think is really cool. That is the thematic tie that I like really care about. Yeah. Right. Like uh, in hiring the apprentices, the the people who are not necessarily doing things that are considered to be morally high are going to make you lose virtue. Yeah. Like you you go to the tax stand and yes. you, and you steal tax. Exactly. Like it's like hey that's that's shame on you. Yeah. Go shame down on you. And, and Don't steal tax. You, yeah. You have a black market where only yes. if you're if you're uh, you know, under a certain virtue, you're allowed to go because people yes. who are virtuous are not going to go to the black market. market. They would never do that. But yeah. if you are too far down, you stop paying tax. <laughs> you don't get to build the cathedral because why yeah. would you do that? You're you're very low. It's very very interesting. It in is sense. interesting. Yeah. The big thing in this game that people remember the most is sending your workers to prison, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that that is a really interesting a dynamic, thematically intertwined, right? Because you're call, kind of like a citizen's arrest. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. we're, we're we're putting the law into like, our own that's hands. That's enough. You've been you've been robbing from the quarry yes. way too much. So yeah. you go there you go to the guard house and kind of gives you abilities to get your prisoners back i think it's really really in really interesting mm -hmm. um, in terms of the components the thing that i think is really cool about this game that i think is also present throughout the entire trilogy is the symbology is yep. very clean mm -hmm. uh, w once you learn the symbols it's gonna it's very consistent yep. and you you know that that little gold symbol that's gonna be points you know what the debt looks like and it's very very consistent throughout the entire thing which mm -hmm. i think is really cool yep. what about you yeah, um, in terms of the illustrations and all that stuff, yeah, totally. Um, it has carried over. You know, obviously we've played all the other games and we're starting with this one, though, just mm -hmm. filming-wise. Um, go going through each game, it it's very easy to kind of pick it up, mm -hmm. uh, you know, where you left off on the previous yeah. one, which is really, really cool. Yes, yeah, the concepts stick with you more, yeah, right? Exactly, yeah. So, um, In terms of the art, I am a big fan of the art. Everything except the uh, the characters for some reason. <laughs> the characters kind of throw me off. They're, They're a little cartoonish. Picasso -y, yeah. Right? They're just very exaggerated. Very exaggerated, yes. Uh, the art style on the board is is really cool. Very good. I think that, yeah, that it's, it's really well, you know, the colors are very bold. Who The illustrator did a pretty, pretty good job mm -hmm. here. In terms of player count and replayability, we already spoke a lot about the two-player version of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, I still think that this is probably better at higher player counts so that you don't have, you don't need the randomness of the bot. Yeah. You can just count, kind of uh, count on other people around the table to create those moments for you. Right, right. Yeah, and I think uh, in a higher player count, everybody wants to hire the these um the apprentices. apprentices so yeah. you see that slide down a little bit more that is true i feel like there should have been maybe one more card in that deck that would help kind of facilitate that mm -hmm. movement yeah it seems like the bot's main intent was capturing people mm -hmm. like that's what the bot was doing yeah um, causing you problems yeah yeah so it is better at higher player counts in my in our opinion because it's a lot more natural the things yeah. that are happening you can kind of foresee like oh well there's a kind of a big concentration of workers there the next player is probably going to go here mm -hmm. unlike the bot who it's completely random right right, right. 
In terms of replayability, uh, this game has quite a bit, um, especially with the different mechanisms that are mm -hmm. kind of intertwined. We've played this now a handful of times, and every single time, I'm I'm very excited when I get to, when I get to play it. You know. Yeah, uh, it's always a different different strategy that you're mm -hmm. building. You can play with the opposite side of the player boards, which yes. has a variable setup, and yeah. that impacts the game quite a bit. Uh -huh. There's one character that I played with once whose uh, virtue started at like 12 or something. All the way up there, yeah. So you know, right off the bat, I wasn't allowed to go to the black market, mm -hmm. and so that was important for me. I, I kind of was like weighing do i want to do things that are going to cause me to lose virtue i'm right. so far on top already right? right so that does impact your play style which i think is cool mm -hmm. the tome saga <laughs> yes tome saga. uh has he comes with the ability to play co-op mm -hmm. so you can play co-op and i believe it, it has rules for all three of the games in yeah trilogy. all of them yep so i thought that was interesting as well yeah we haven't experienced that yet but mm -hmm. maybe in the future and uh in terms of the weight because that's something that we like to talk about now what are your thoughts on this one uh it's, it's relatively light but mm -hmm. there is enough decision making so that it's good enough for pretty much all gamers i would say yeah um, beginners intro gamers or even the experienced gamers um i'm still constantly trying to figure out a way to kind of make things work for me so i can score the most points obviously mm -hmm. so um yeah i think it has a good it's a nice good introductory way into the series into um, the series yeah. yes because as the series progresses it definitely changes yes yeah. we are were, we were going to have a final wrap-up video for the entire trilogy so mm -hmm. we're going to try our best to not talk about them too much right yeah. now okay and finally in terms of mechanics anything uh that we haven't talked about that you wanted to mention uh well you know the thing that i just want to mention about this game that i think is cool is it's bringing us back to to the original feel of worker placement games yeah. you know mm -hmm. when we first started getting into the hobby the big craze was worker placement everybody was coming out with worker placement games yeah that's like the, the one of the simplest mechanics to understand right mm -hmm. you put out a worker you gain resources that's, that's that but this puts a spin on it you put out workers it's going to give you increasing returns Compounds. on yeah on mm -hmm. your workers the more that that you keep your workers there but there's always that risk you put the bullseye on your back yes yeah because for one coin i can go wrangle you up with yes. yeah, four of them turn them in for four you know so so it, it's Pretty like nice. it has that that mechanic but it also has that risk and i, th I really like that balance mm -hmm. um i also think that the tempo of this game is really beautiful it is good, you know yeah. you put out a worker you do the thing and you keep on going yep. you keep going 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 in circles mm -hmm. until the game ends yep. and uh i think that that's really cool and in general, I think that that is my main takeaway, just the overall structure. It has a lot of separate parts that make it into one whole. Very cohesive. Right? But yeah. it's cohesive. Yeah. You know, the way that the cathedral works versus the buildings, which one are you going to build? Uh, if you want to go to the left, lower left side of the board, those actions are a lot more tastier, but yep. they're all also a lot more riskier, right? They're, yeah. They cost more in virtue and in money. Yeah. So... It's really, really interesting. I really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, me too. Uh, what are your What are your final thoughts? Yeah, my favorite part of the game, I think, is that virtue track. Um, I really enjoy the fact that there are certain actions or activities that you do that are going to harm you on that. Mm -hmm. And then there's certain things that you can do that's going to help you on that. And that teeter-totter of, you know, there's negative points going down, but there's positive points going up. Yes. Uh, that's, that's probably my favorite part of the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that is Architects of the West Kingdom. Thank you so much for watching. We are going to be continuing on the next one with Paladins which is the second game in this series. And if you'd like to see that, please consider subscribing as we're gonna be posting another video soon. Thank you all so much for watching, appreciate it. Thank you, bye. bye.